My name is Robert Blackledge. I'm the founder of Startup Cruise. We believe that education empowers you, entrepreneurial mindset fortifies you, and pursuing passion sets you free. So we created an event that educates you on the entrepreneurial mindset and empowers you to pursue your passion. Oh, there you go. While you're on the deep blue sea. This event really came from my own experience that I went through called Startup Bus. In 2017, I hopped on a bus with complete strangers, pitched my idea, and in three days, we built a functioning product and made it into the finals for the pitch contest at the end against 30 other companies from around the country. But what's really impactful about this event, well beyond a startup weekend and a hackathon, is that because you have to actually put a product in the market and you have to sell it to even have a chance in the final pitch contest, that you are experiential learning what all that education you've had and how to apply it. It's been transformative. It was transformative for me and the individuals that you see that were on my team. Adam is now the director of blockchain for IBM Watson. Trey Steinhoff, he is a designer, for lead designer for the Synapse Conference out of Tampa. And Mitch Garcia is a lead designer or developer at Bank of the Ozarks. To be able to watch someone come in who is a developer and who is focused on coding, right? Stereotypical, sits there and stares at a computer. And in three days, see them take a stage and confidently talk about what they'd been working on. There's so much so that you can hear the mic drop when they're finished. That has reverberating impacts well beyond their lives. So I went back and I read it, conducted a route. Had an incredible time. We put two teams in the finals and we took, this is almost 60 people on a bus where we had a transformative environment where they got to actually apply all the education that they had and the experience. Everything you learn Every entrepreneurial program you go through will tell you to understand what your strengths are and your weaknesses are, but they don't show you how to do it. If you can't do it in three days, you're not good at it. It's not a strength. And you have to go out and find those who have those strengths to fill your weaknesses. Otherwise, you'll never launch a product with sales and you'll never be strong at a pitch. It is a transformative experience. This is when we met up with a bunch of people. So beyond the actual process of engaging in something that is impossible, you meet incredible people. This kind of event, just like Startup Weekend and Hackathon, bring out the best of people. And you build relationships that are long lasting. Now that bus is a for-profit organization. And it is a lot of work. I ended up helping organize four of the nine routes and my own route included in that. I was burnt out and didn't want to do any more. And then in August, the state asked me to build a program for veterans. I'm a veteran myself and knowing how impactful these events can be for them, we brought eight on ours and they were, two of them were in the final second place position, right? I wanted to give back in a way that had an impact. And to see how transformative this event was for this on a camping trip where we didn't even build anything, we just focused on the business side of it, it inspired me to do something that I feel has an impact or a chance and an opportunity to make a big difference in a lot of individuals' lives. I launched a nonprofit called Entrepreneur Matters, who has a marquee event called Startup Cruise, leveraging Florida's greatest resource, our tourism industry. They handle all the logistics, which means everybody I bring on board to help motivate and guide and develop these individuals, the people that have already done it, the people who have already conducted teams through it, will be focused solely on developing the individuals participating in the event. And that has a massive impact. I started this in October, and since then, we've gotten incredible engagement. I haven't even done any marketing yet. These are just through conversations. 
we have Veterans Florida sponsoring veterans on the event again. We have Junior Achievement looking to put 20 high schoolers on the event. We have Twilo paying for Wi-Fi for everyone that participates. And then we have partners like Military Spouse, Bunkers Labs, and Royal Caribbean who are spreading the word for us, pushing it out to their networks and engaging people. And then Veteran Trust is sponsoring our 501C, which helps us fast track it. I invite you to pursue your passion, step out beyond your comfort zone where the world starts, and join us on April 20th in Fort Lauderdale. You can find out more on startupcruise.us and sign up there. Thank you. I'm on move. So this is $1,000 for an interior and $1,250 for a balcony. That's an early bird pricing. Unfortunately, with cruises, they go up the closer you get to the cruise date. So the sooner you sign up, the sooner, the cheaper it'll be. The point of a nonprofit is to help engage those who couldn't afford to go. So we can leverage foundational money, sponsorship monies, and really engage the people on a broad scale. We're going to Jamaica and Haiti where we'll be engaging in their entrepreneurship communities. So it's become an international, global event. So, five-day cruise? Five-day cruise. Yeah. You have to go to the right, sorry. There. More? Yeah. All right, there we go. Is mostly everything done around uh, the days at sea, or when is stuff getting done? Uh, it's, yes, you three days in the boat and then we pitch in the, on the boat, right? So essentially it's, it's five days, the first day is, is mainly a wash and then the last day you're getting off. So we have uh, two and a half days of development and the last day is what pitches. It's all done on the cruise. Okay, and is it all stuff that you, so like I have an organization that does tiny houses, they won't be able to bring a tiny house on to demonstrate for a week one. So is there restrictions as far as what? People's projects to be uh, we focus mainly on tech because that's oh, okay. the easiest and fastest to develop. Okay. But the team that took second place on my uh, startup bus it created a diaper bag with a baboose. A baboose is what you put your child to carry it in. Uh, they integrated it together on a bus traveling across the country. Oh, yeah, but right? it's not like something big that you no. tools. No, so people bring in hardware to do dev work on it. Um, you can mainly are focusing on launching a, a software based product. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, I leverage, um, no, we lost the pitch. I leverage all the conductors from the last startup bus. So we have individuals who are leading teams that have already led teams before. Then I brought in mentors of people who participated last year. So not only do you have somebody who's led an entire core of individuals through this, you have people who have just gone through the experience. And then beyond that, we have subject matter experts. So Stephen Fisk. He was, he was a marketing engine behind one of the first doorbells that sent the picture to your phone. They were on Shark Tank. They had a $50 million exit. And then uh, Maxine, who runs uh, Caribou out of South Fork, she's going to be participating as well. So we have a couple different individuals, and I'm vetting out. We've had subject matter experts. My, my network's kind of vast. Uh, I spent the last year traveling across the country and engaging uh, in my for-profit company and we're, we're picking through the top and the brightest that can really help maximize uh, rapid development and launch of a product. What are your follow-up plan, follow plans after the cruise is over for the people that go on it? Mm. This is such an impactful experience and most of those individuals don't go on to start companies. Starting a company is a tool, not the goal. It's nearly impossible to get a product in the market and launch. But the skills that are required to do that cover a wide variety, everything from marketing to development. And that gives you an insight into what it takes to actually do something that is nearly impossible and encourages, you can't do it if you don't network. 
if you don't leverage all the resources, the people on the ship, the people going through the event, and the people back home to really help you get this up off the ground. And that kind of mentality, that entrepreneur mindset is empowering. Did you notice that my team, I'm the only entrepreneur that kept doing that, right? One, two percent of these ideas move on. The other three individuals moved up in their career because it's a mindset, a problem-solving skill that is not taught and can only be experienced. And this kind of experience is the only one I found that does it in three days. Sure. So I'm, I'm actually uh, moving to Tallahassee to take over the entrepreneur efforts there and engage the community. Um, but a lot of it is the network you create, right? The people you know. Now they'll be tied in this massive network, whether or not they are starting something or they need a resource or they know how to reach out beyond their... Ultimately, all I can do is give them the tools to be successful, right? As an entrepreneur, you have to be the one who scrounges beyond your means and are able to lever the resources around you. But they don't teach you how to do that in education. Most education, this teaches you that. It sounds like you're giving the people that attend, though, an opportunity to do like you did and start your own startup sort of group to support and keep the conversation going. Just doing it instead of camping, you're doing it on Ship. Or a bus, right? So I do. So I just answered this question. So if somebody gets moved, touched, and inspired, then they yeah. have an opportunity maybe to take on their own. The best way I can explain this is what happened to me, right? Even though I have all these friends and these people all across the country, and it's great for conversations, most of them aren't going to jump on and start a startup with you. It's not an easy thing. It's one of the hardest things you'll probably do, other than parenthood, which I just found that out. <laughs> but <laughs> ultimately. I moved to Tampa, I engaged Tampa as a market, I expanded my network and I grew my, non my for-profit to 14 unpaid employees. You don't do that without a skill set of expanding and gaining resources, right? And it's understanding that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it, learning to share your story and engaging in people. That's the skill sets, the entrepreneur mindset that you gain and the confidence you get from, if I can launch a company in three days, I got a few months to work on something, it's going to be incredible. Just to give another viewpoint on the whole issue of what do you take away, would you say that the first company that people start uh, is successful? Uh, no. <laughs> so do you? You're, uh, the statistically, you've you're, you're got a 90% chance of failing, right, plus, in the first year. And then by the fifth year, you're, you're almost 100%, right? So Absolutely. And then doing something like this gives you a, a good starting place and a great foundation. So who can, like, who all are you looking for to go on this cruise? Everyone. So in order to launch a company, we look for about 50% of the people to be developers, and then 25% to be graphic designers, and then 25% to you be your biz dev, right? To really build a product, Put it something into the world that people will use. It's got to look pretty. And then you have to have people that can sell it. You have to have those people that are willing to turn the, clock, turn the phone over, willing to go out and build a, a, a marketing campaign to push it across massive amounts of individuals. It, it, is, it takes the whole package. And it is those kind of individuals, which essentially is everyone, right? People who want to understand what they're capable of and what they're able to achieve. Do you have people do like maybe some homework ahead of time so they are ready to run when they get on, or no, it's all just? You can, and I, I would be remiss to say that you can't prepare for this, right? Uh, sharpen up your own skill sets, things that you're good at, make sure you're on top of your game when you come on board, but we don't want you to come on with anything that you've worked on. I don't want you to have, I want you to come on with something that you, are uh, a pain point that you have that you're passionate about resolving, and about a 30 second pitch about who you are. About who you are. Yep. So like Startup Weekend, we do that in the beginning, but we make everyone pitch. And that conversation about something that they care about, a little bit about themselves, is really revealing. And out of there, in 20 minutes, we can get whole teams, the whole 
group will be split up into small groups and may or may not even work on any of the ideas that were brought to the table. The one that took second place, nobody pitched that idea out of the team of six people they formed. But they got together, they talked about what their skills were, and they said, this is something we can do. And how many people are you looking for? 120. Cats? More, yeah, Sorry, cat. the boat's going anyway, so if you have more than uh, You have to book through, me, through, our, through our website to be part of the event because we have to bring in the subject matter experts and the team to support it. Uh, with it being an inaugural event, we're kind of keeping it at 120. If we end up having massive overflow, uh, I could probably expand it to 300. 120 cabins or 120 people? People. Yeah, with an expansion and capability of about 300 is what I figured the network could handle. $1,000 is dual occupancy camp. It is a dual occupancy, yeah. Well, it's a commitment cost, too. It is, and you won't be in that cabin. <laughs> <laughs> no. Which is okay. Yeah. Those but you'll have unlimited access to food and incredible scenery, which is more, uh, so the scenery is incredible and must. You have to take moments to take it in. Um, to believe it or not, if you were to sit there and do try to do three days of straight work, you'd create crap. And that happens a lot of hackathons. People stay up and then lose sleep and then don't get it done. And mind you, you won't sleep much on this. But taking those moments to appreciate something beautiful really center you and help you pursue what you're passionate about. It's the whole aspect of the holistic approach to developing an organization. Thank you. Robert, what can the Pensacola community do for you? Yeah, so we're definitely looking for sponsors. If you know anyone who would be interested in bringing in uh, sponsorship to support this kind of event, it op opens the opportunity to those who could not pay for this. Uh, second, spread the word. If you know anyone that would like to participate in these kind of events, feel free to let, send them our way. And last, I'm here to help you too. So if you have any needs, feel free to reach out.